Hello and welcome to Screen Views. I'm Dave. I'm James. And this is the weekly podcast where we give our views on a film and TV show. Each episode is unscripted, unedited, so anything can happen. Listeners should be aware that we do include spoilers, so feel free to fast forward, rewind, or simply buckle up and enjoy a somewhat coherent conversation. Our podcast is based on the idea that there's no such thing as a bad movie. Therefore, for every review, we'll give a recommendation instead of a rating. But first up, we're going to have a quick discussion about what we talked about last week to see if our opinions have changed. Hello. Hello. Hello, 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 hello. You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is the new format, James. Yeah. So, so episode episode eight now. Yes. Um, but it's like like uh, we're filming in near enough the same time as our other other um other review of uh, Avengers. Um Yeah. For the for the power mm. of media, we uh, yeah. we were able to create like this other podcast. Well, yeah, it's still the yeah. same podcast. Yeah, still the yeah. same, James and Dave. Yeah. Um, but and I've just referred to us in third person there, which yeah. I'm not. James too enjoys happy you referring. Oh, third person. We're back to Tomb Raider now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dave likes this podcast because he's a member of it. Yeah. Um, so it's still us, um, but we've just split the film and TV into two separate strands, so listeners can tune in to the film section or the yeah. tv section or both mm. plus the the mini so yeah. so i, I think, think this this separate has been and i there's no better time for it because of the amount we went on about like we, we got a super long episode yeah. of our film review well we needed so, it i think yeah. avengers there was a lot to talk about yeah um there's a lot so. that i needed to get my head around mm. or get out of my head yeah in regards to time um yeah, so we, so if you want to have a listen, that yeah. podcast is out there. Yeah, it's just the episode before this, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah, feel free to. Um, so this week we need to talk so, about last week first. Yeah, Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. I I am still excited to see a new series of Jessica Jones. So even though it was how disappointing we made it, we were both with the, this series. I think I am still excited about about where the character could go and. And like, um, I believe Netflix and Marvel are wise enough to understand their errors, and I don't believe we're going to fall into this pit again. So even though last week was um, disappointing, I would have watched series of series two again, but I would watch series one again. Yeah. Um, well, as we established in the last episode, mm. you know, Marvel uh, execs are listening to our our podcast, so really? they they're going to hear our feedback and they're going to take that on board. Mm. And they they're gonna ask us to write the next series and yeah. you know and make it awesome. Mm, yeah, the recent one probably just 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 did a podcast. That's why they're that's why they're so famous. Yeah, there. yeah. We don't need yeah. any filmmaking <laughs> talents whatsoever. It's just yeah. that you know we can we can talk yeah. about how we would make films better. Yeah, because making films is easy, James. Yeah, we just have front people. We just hire other people just to. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, think Steve Spielberg directs? <laughs> nah, he's just yeah. a pretty face. That's, we're that's we're just the we're just the voices. Yeah, we're not even yeah. a face. We're just voices. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, just um, um, yeah. So I yeah, I feel like we were quite down on Jessica Jones. I mean, I like. So yeah, I agree. I think as a show, as a concept, I think it um it works really well. Mm. I think season one is the best for me. My favorite of the Netflix Marvel okay. bits. I know we've had this argument and we'll probably have it well, again. It's, different. it's, it's completely I, different. Yeah, I think. Um, um, but I do. It's I, hard to judge it against other things. And I think David Tennant helps mm. a lot with that. Um, but I do think the writing in the first one is really strong. I think the threat level is really good. Mm. Um, I think the dynamic between the characters works really well. Season two, yeah, did take a bit of a dive. Yeah, so I don't think I'm. I don't think it's put me off the show and the concept. I think if a, yeah, like you say, if a new season comes out, series three, it'll be I'll be interested to see where they take it. Um, however, I think I'll be my expectations will be a lot lower, so I mm. might enjoy it a bit more. Yeah. Or if it sort of starts to pan out in the same way as this season, and I might switch off very quickly. Um. Yeah. So I think for me it's it's balancing on a on a knife edge okay. um as to whether I, I stick with it or not. Cool. Um 
So hopefully it it takes a a turn an upwards turn cool. for for the better. But as we were saying, like the way that they sort of left things at the end, um, I know you were sort of intrigued about with the whole Trish situation. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not so convinced by that. Um, I don't. Um, one thing that we would didn't really go into a lot of detail about was the um, the lawyer storyline that you know the Matrix yeah. lady. Yeah, I can't remember her name, but um, we didn't really talk about that. And and I thought the way that they took that, even that sort of separate story, wasn't the right direction. I, I think they could have made it right. interesting. I thought that 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 story was like literally just ticking boxes. Yeah. Okay. What what sort of character? What sort of interesting yeah. characters are we gonna put in this show? Mm. Oh, we'll just have this separate storyline just to tick boxes. Oh, it's interesting. This person's done this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. Yeah, but I think they could have mm. taken it. I'm trying to not to give give spoilers because that's not what we're here for for this episode. No. Um, in regards to Jessica Jones, so mm. um, without saying too much, I just you know again mm. they didn't they weren't the whole season season two there weren't any storylines that i sort of kept up with and thought oh well you know that storyline's good but you know which redeems it like every yeah. single strand you know story arc for the yeah. different characters i found annoying or frustrating yeah. and again it sort of comes a bit back around to like what we were talking about with tomb raider is that it doesn't feel good when you're watching something that where you think I could I could do a better job of the writing here and yeah. and that's not great. It doesn't mean that it's bad writing. I wouldn't say that at all. Like, you yeah. know, I think um, you know, like the whole podcast that we talk about is that there's no such thing as a bad movie. Yeah. And and I think, you know, even if we're down on a show, I think that does does still apply. Yeah. And, you know, I I think there is a lot of merit in there and I do think a lot of people we will watch Jessica Jones season two and enjoy it. So, uh, I, on the, just one one final note on that, I think um, all these separate stories in the first season of Jessica Jones, whether you thought they were great or they thought they were meh, the way they intertwined with the main story at the end was done really was really interesting. So there's one with like Luke Cage where he entwines with the main story at the end is quite interesting. There's yeah. one with the neighbours. Mm. Um, so there's a druggy neighbour which the way he entwines is interesting. There's also some crazy neighbours upstairs the way they entwine is interesting. So even the the low points of season one get twisted into the main story in a really interesting way. Yeah. But I feel like with uh, season two, each of the stories don't really get twisted to the main story. The main story is very separate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I think like it's funny there. I was as you were just talking about that. I was just thinking about how, um, in season two, the boyfriend character that comes in mm. or the love interest, um, is quite in interesting. So maybe there's a bit there that the adds British a different. Guy. You, you, no, not him. Um, no, he's the the one who's from Britain who whose <laughs> accent is all over the place. Um, no, not him. Um, the, 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 the downstairs, yeah, oh, it's kind yes. of a spoiler. Yes, but yes. Yeah. Um, no, um, it's, no, I think, I guess so that's, that's enough. That's, yeah. That's not really a spoiler. Okay. All right, cool. 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 Um, okay. So, should we move on? Yeah, move on um, to this week. Yeah, this week, Jane the Virgin. Jane so, the Virgin. so I suggested this uh, TV show to look at. It's yeah. available on Netflix. Yeah. Um, the reason that I suggested it last week is because season four has just mm -hmm. come to a conclusion, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, so with Jane the Virgin, because it's not a Netflix made show, mm. um, when it comes out, they release one a week. Yeah. So it's not a, like it comes onto Netflix and you've got the whole season there. Mm. Um, you, you have to watch one a week. However, I do think it's a good show personally that, if you've got all the seasons in front of you. So I think one of the reasons for talking about it now is to maybe try and get people excited about the show. Yeah. Uh, however, um, we are going to include spoilers, so uh, potentially. Yeah. So if you don't want to hear spoilers about the show, then uh, you know now's the time to switch off, mm. go watch it, 
and um, come back and see if your opinions agree with what we're what we're going to say. Um, so, um, so the premise of the show is um, Jane, the main character, um, gets artificially inseminated. Um, hence the title of the show, Jane the Virgin. Um, because she's not had sex and she gets accidentally <laughs> artificially inseminated. Sorry, I should try and make that that clear. That's not uh, how it works, Dave, you know. Um, so, um, so that's kind of the premise of the show. So I don't think it's giving away too much to no, saying that. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty upfront in terms of the first episode. Um, so, but another reason for suggesting the show... Um, other than season four finishing, is that I personally thought it's it's a good one to look at because there's quite a big female cast involved and there's mm. a lot in the show about sisterhood, motherhood and, you know, family dynamics. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think about that like that. So, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, I... Well, so what? What would you want to explain where you're up to, James, and I, go through your initial reactions, yeah. and I can maybe. I watched. Um, so basically, I, I said last week it reminds me of like stuff like Ugly Betty and, and stuff like that, and uh, I like while I was watching it, I, I got reminded of like um, Desperate Housewives, and also um, um, Lemony Snicket series of unfortunate events, um, a little okay. bit as well. I haven't um, seen that. Well, it's it's like a there's like a like um you've got um a narrator narrating the story as well. Right. So okay. It's yeah. Like a, like a fairy tale, um, and I watched the first three episodes, um, and this is not for me. It's um I didn't connect. I didn't this. I did. I found it really difficult to connect with it. I go into detail, but um, but I understand this show's got four seasons, so. I know. I know other people could enjoy it. I can, I can appreciate how it is a good show, not that not that it's late the show. Yeah. But um, I know. I don't. The the show isn't isn't for me. Um, I got through the first two episodes and I found it difficult to get through the third one. Okay. Uh, for me, Do I, you know I why? actually find it difficult. Yes. Okay. So, I feel like the maybe I'm maybe when I watch like Ugly Betty and and the Americanized sort of like drama and it's really I, I, I find it really bad to compare to ugly betty because of this the latino show I find what it, we, find it yeah really what we said last week which was like yeah what well, there's only two latino <laughs> shows out there ugly betty and this one but when which i think it's not it, the yeah. case obviously but yeah, i suppose uh, ugly betty is the, the, a, a latin based show that kind of was mm. really popular over here so yeah it makes sense to make that comparison uh, i think I don't know if I just wasn't, I, I didn't have a maturity level or if I didn't really have a grasp of what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, but I'm enjoying that more. So maybe if I look back on Ugly Betty now, I may have the same sort of reaction. But I found this show very difficult to watch. So I'll go through it one by one. I thought the main actress is great. I think she's fantastic. And I think all the actors in the show, I think, are, are good. I just find the show very patronising. Um, I'm very patronised and very insulted as a viewer. Um, when you say patronising, what, what do you mean by that? So, um, in terms of, in terms of like narration, the voiceover, and the way the show is like put together and come together, I like to, as an audience member, I like to notice details and notice stuff, and I like to make my own conclusion. I like to really work out what everybody's feeling, what everybody means through their reactions and through their acting. And I did not appreciate watching a scene and a scene completely stopping for the narrator to tell me exactly what the actors meant to portray, and then if and then the scene the scene c continues, and so throughout each episode it kept on pausing and it kept on telling me what the so basically an actor will say something and then they'll react and I know they're reacting because of a certain reason, but then the narrator pauses and. Right, guys, let me tell you exactly why she's reacting like this. She's reacting like this because she knows this person, this person, this person. And if you don't remember that, we're now going to rewind to this one when this happened just so you can visually see what happened as well. Okay, now we're going to continue with the show. We're going to continue with the show. And yeah, I get what you're saying about that, yeah. And I kept on feeling like 
just let me enjoy the story let me let me work this out stop stopping and stop and it also it, I feel like it patronizes the audience the, the person's performance because I'm no longer judging them on the performance anymore because I've already got the information from the from the narrator and it just feels like I don't know I just it just feels like you know when you're watching something and something's mm. over analyzing in the room and you're like just yeah. shut up let me watch this that, like, that's normally me like, <laughs> Like if you're in a cinema and you, you're watching a film, oh for the god, time, but you yeah, overhear yeah, somebody talking yeah, about. I hate that when it's like, I think uh, I think it's okay to do that at home when it's mm. just you and one other person in the room, but when there's when it's a group or like, yeah, yeah. it's not, and it's not ideal. And when the narration's going on, I also felt like, um, and especially with Jane, I think it happens all the time with Jane. There'll be a scene where she just has to just keep a blank face. While the narrator finishes talking, and she's like literally just got this blank face, and she's just doing nothing, and I'm just thinking, I don't care about the narration, mm. and what you're presenting to me on pit on the picture, it's just like you again, you you paused, and it's sort of like, and this is this is meant to be, so it it distracts me in the middle of a scene, and it distracts me at the start and ends of a scene, and I felt like nearly every other scene, I'm just being pulled out of this. Um, and yeah, and that's the one. And also, yeah, I, I just I just commented that I didn't care about the narrator. I think it's great when a narrator is a character. It's like one of the great things about Desperate Housewives is how the narrator was a character. You never saw her, but she clearly was a character. She had information which we didn't yeah, know. But the, yeah, and it's sort of like, and it's, so you wanted to hear hear from her. And, yeah, it's like the Ron Howard Arrested Development. Yeah, I'm not seeing Arrested Development, but it's sorry. <laughs> But yeah, and it's also so. And then I, I was thinking about like what other modern day things have I seen with a narrator, and I thought about Lemony Snicket. And Lemony Snicket is the 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 Amazon series. I find it really fascinating. Is it on Amazon? Is it? Yeah, I thought it was on Netflix. Oh no, sorry, Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. But it's so fascinating because even though the narrator is often narrating what is happening on screen, the narrator's view of you could tell it's a personal view. And you tell it's not uh, it's not attached to exactly what the characters are feeling. So it's sort of like it's not parallel. So I'm listening to the narrator and I'm hearing one thing. I'm looking at the actors and I'm seeing another thing, and I'm experiencing the scene. If I'm hearing the narrator, then I'm experiencing one way. If I'm just looking at the actor, I'm experiencing the scene another way. But with this, with um, with Jane mm-hmm. Virgin, I feel like they pause on the visuals, and everybody pauses, everybody stops. And it's just left to the narrator. And I was just thinking, you're not working. The narrator isn't worked into the story. It's just um, an annoying person. I'm in a seat next to you. Just explain the plot. Um, and and because they... And it's also from episode to episode. There is not... A, and I like to... I know we've been... We, we're in a binge society now. And I like... And I can understand what people may argue with me in a second. But I hate the callback to the last episode constantly. I don't mind the recap at the beginning because you can skip that if you wanted to, and you can last time and so and so. Right. You can do that. I don't mind that. It, like, annoy, it does annoy me to hell because I watch stuff on the man. However, I'm aware why there's a catch up, and I don't mind that they can have a catch up at the beginning. That's fine. But when they're when they're constantly like rewinding in the show to the last show. It just doesn't. I don't know. I just didn't. I just. I'm just thinking. I. I like to be rewarded by how much I pay attention, and if I've paid attention to somebody, like yeah. So like in um in the episode the um so in the first ep- first episode you find out that, that flashback of of how the two how the two one of the two two main characters meet, and then in the second episode, one of the characters says something which is directly referencing to when they first met. I'm thinking, oh, I, I remember, I remember that. Oh, that's kind of cool. And the main actress sort of reacts to it. I think, oh, that's that's really cool. But then the narrator comes in, they stop, rewind to the last episode, let's look, look at this scene. And I just felt it really patronising. I mean, we watched a film called La La Land, and I just, I feel like that, that film is written so well. And there's moments in the film where they're referencing stuff, but they don't point it out. And you as the audience, you notice it. It's like it's really rewarding. Mm. And with this one, 
it's it's planting all these little things but then it's pausing and I just found it I can't get into it because yeah. it always puts me out no I, I understand that and um, what I think we've been saying a lot on this show is watch mm. the first 30 seconds and mm. you work out whether you like this show or not yeah I remember watching season one, mm. which was quite a long time ago now, and I was I was struggling mm. to get into it. I don't know if it's the same reasons mm. that you're you're suggesting, but um, and it it could be, well be that at the start that it's a bit clunky. Um, I don't know, but I can rem- I can remember mm. finding it difficult the first, especially the first three episodes possibly four or five of uh, you know struggling to get into it mm. um but once i think once you get into it and mm. you got used to the the format it gets i think they maybe iron out some of the issues mm. uh i don't think i don't think it's maybe for you so i think it the narrator stuff does continue yeah, and I think the pointing out the flashbacks and that sort of stuff mm. that doesn't go away. No. So I don't think it suddenly becomes more sophisticated. Yeah, but I think it does. There is definitely a shift of when it gets better. Mm. I can't remember the exact point of of that, but I I I can I can distinctly remember finding it difficult to get into this show. Yeah, and so m- my advice to some people is that if you are struggling at the start it's may mm. maybe if you persist with it yeah there is a reward um however i don't um uh i think uh if you if you find it patronizing in terms of spelling stuff out a bit too much mm. that maybe doesn't go away yeah so maybe i think i think in there um you can it, it it does get a bit more difficult, but I think um, there's definitely a shift for me. Did is the father figure come in? Yeah, is Rogelio yeah. in it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I mean that's 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 the um, that's one character having an issue as well. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. <laughs> if you don't like his like well, for me, one he's one of the best sort of characters in in the show. Well, I think the um, when Jane is acting pretty much on her own. I think she's superb. I think I think I really enjoy them scenes. Yeah. I really think she's great on her own. And uh, when the um when the Raphael character is on his own and pretty much on his own, I think he he acts he acts really well. Um but fortunately I don't think I think all the other characters aren't given well from what I've seen I've only watched three episodes, but I don't think the actors are given an opportunity to act i feel like i just feel like it's the acting is all a bit silly and over dramatic and mm. i, I try this is what i mean about getting into it because like mm. as it progresses and as you get into the kind of style and the rhythm mm. it gets a bit better and the sort of the mellow drama it, it becomes a sort of postmodern uh take on telenovelas in a way that's, I, don't, I say postmodern because it's, it's self-aware. So, it, the show itself is a um, uh, a critique and a deconstruction of t- telenovelas, but in doing that, it then becomes a tel- telenovela, mm. and it, you start to realise why um, some of the acting is overblown. Some of the scenes are are over dramatic mm. because it, it links in and season four there's a really good um storyline in season four with a character called river fields who they're trying to get in to act in one of the shows with R- rogelio mm. and um uh i think he, the you know they they do a lot of um you know it, sort of seeing s- sh- explaining how to the outsider you might not understand this world of telenovelas mm. and and that's that comes in season four but throughout the first three seasons it 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 you as a viewer by that point you're kind of used to it 
So you're, it's almost like you're an insider watching a new outsider mm. trying to get to grips with this uh, culture. Mm. And that's what I quite like about this show is that, um, uh, you know, it is um, without trying to to sound too uncultured. Is uncultured a word? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, because like I didn't, I didn't understand that world of telenovelas. What is telenovela? So, uh, <laughs> it's like, okay, um, I probably should have researched this. Um, but my, in my head, a telenovela is um, the Latin American version of a soap. Okay. So it's something that's on like Monday to Friday, mm. and um, a bit like Neighbours or EastEnders, mm. and like there's lots of you know stereotyped storylines like yeah. somebody sleeping with their cousin or sister or mm. is you know they've got um you know so something crazy happening okay. and that's like really melodramatic over the top and um i suppose it's like um brooks led you know a more high brow version would be like um a Pedro Armadova film. Um, I'm trying to think of the title, but it's that like melodramatic, yeah, um, over the top, yeah. Um, you know, it's the end of the world, and mm. like everybody's sort of um, kind of, you know, it's all everything sort of like kicking off, and yeah, there's loads of twists and turns, but they might be like sometimes they're quite silly. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. they're, you know, like I, ridiculous and and far fetched, mm. but for the genre of the mm. the soaps, it kind of works. So this show again is like um, it's it twists it in itself because this show for me is about showing the world about what tele telenovelas are about, mm. but it also weaves in the, the the plot lines of um how to create a telenovela for an american audience mm. and especially again season four that's what this a lot of the storylines is is about uh-huh. um so i think you know to someone like me who who doesn't understand that world of telenovelas um this show is is really good because it it, it sort of it is an, it's an access and entry point into that that culture mm. whereas um someone who is a bit clued up again might find jane the mm. virgin a little bit patronizing yeah um but i think for me it, it's a really good like access point um for understanding that whole culture i mean it's um one thing which i think i would have watched a lot more of them if and I know this is just a, a small gripe, but um, and they have basically the grandma character speaks doesn't speak English, and so it goes from subtitles to English yeah. when she's around. And so I tried to put this in the in the background, so do it while I'm washing up and doing it doing it in the background. But I kept on having to stop what I'm doing, rewind, watch the scene again, but in subtitles. Mm. And so I can't. I wish I could, because I think I think it it is sort of like a very good background sort of thing for me. I think I would have, if I could watch it in the black background and do a lot of stuff and do other stuff while while watching mm. it, I think I probably would have got through a mm. lot more. Yeah. But because I, I literally had to just stop what yeah. I was doing, go back. Would you prefer it if they said, can we speak in English yeah. now, please? <laughs> can, can anyone speak, speak English? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, and I, I know that's just like a small gripe for me. And I, I know, but I think... But, um, but you don't like that, James. So no. When no, shows I, do that. So I know I, I don't do that, but like I say, it's not. It's for me. It wasn't enough for me to prioritize it and sit down. But I think it, it yeah. is sort of like a background sort of thing. It's not. But, it's not like a gripping. It's mm. not like going to grip you. No. Although, um, it is quite light-hearted. I don't mind light-hearted stuff because it, it's like, like, like when I was watching it, I got reminded of Desperate, Desperate Housewives, Lemony Snicket, and also Pushing Daisies. I don't know if you saw that. I know I've not seen that, but I, I I would quite like to check that out at some uh, point. I yeah. I remember I'm pushing day because this this sort of style doesn't I'm not really used to it, but it it mostly reminds me of pushing daisies, especially with the voiceover and especially with 
explaining stuff via narration. Mm. Uh, but I remember actually, I don't remember enough to comment on the narration, but I remember it not it not be distracting, and I yeah. remember going through it. Yeah, I think I think mm. I do think like if you I do think if you persist with the show, yeah, I, th- I do think the payoff is is there. Uh-huh. I, I I honest I honestly believe that. However, I think. Um, you know, it might be more for a female audience than an, a male audience, tra- in it, like traditionally, in in the sense that, um, you know, you, it's not there's no not really much action, there's not really much drama, um, not drama, um, like uh, I don't know, is it a lot of it's well, I I should try and explain this to listeners, which is that the show is Jane in the show is also uh an, an aspiring writer mm. and she likes to write um sort of romance novels um i guess along the similar lines of 50 shades um you know where it's like a little bit sexy mm. um but also mainly about kind of like the high high romance um so yeah there's a lot of overblown sort of romance and mm comedy in there that I think um I quite like and I think once you get used to the rhythm it it, it, it is quite funny. Um it's not necessarily like laugh out loud sitcom but I suppose it's sort of blending the lines between sort of romance, drama and comedy and the only thing that I can sort of think of off the top of my head in terms of um that genre of comparison is maybe Gilmore Girls. Okay. Yeah just because of the kind of generational sister, Mm. um, not sister, daughter, mother, grandma sort of Mm. dynamic and also the kind of, you know, like uh, sort of like comedic sort of interactions. Mm. Um, But the the key difference is, is that Jane the Virgin very much takes, goes on a path of overblown dramatic plot twists and turns yeah. That sort of keep you interested, but they're also, you know, they're they're it's a social commentary on telenovela mm. pot, plot twists and turns. So there's some like real big things that come in later, especially in the first season that um that fit that telenovela mm. mould. Um so there's a, a key difference there. But I think um I suppose I'm sort of moving into what what I'm would recommend this show yeah. for, and and what I'm sort of suggesting is that I do think, um, I sort of I sort of enjoy it, but I think, say a couple, um, a stereotypical couple are sitting down to watch it, um, if one half of that couple wants to see action grit, like is it's not the it's not the show for them. So this this show is definitely for for people who like um, shows that empower females in a mm. in a good way that mm. um, Jessica Jones didn't doesn't do for me. No. Um, so if you like female empowerment and you like um, I got shows top about of that, yeah, I, I mean I, I think it comes a lot later. I think again, yeah. if you if you invest in it, cool. it's not there at the start. It's yeah. not there in the first three episodes. Mm. But you if you invest, you get the relationship between the the daughter and the mother and the grandma it progresses it develops and um i think they they touch on some very interesting themes around uh immigration um like say uh like family um but from a sort of mother daughter grandma point of view mm. um i think uh, a sort of um, a feminist critique of this show might say, "Yeah, but the it's all about relate like relationships with men a lot." Mm. But I think if you if you scratch between the scratch under the surface a little bit, um, it 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 isn't actually about. Although on face value, it's about getting you know keeping your boyfriend or you know having an affair or whatever. It's actually not about that. It's mm. about um you know it's about motherhood it's about sisterhood it's about um mm. family relationships in um especially within a family unit where um 
father figures are, n are maybe not present mm. and so i think um for me the the if you if you keep with it, mm. it you you and you get the rhythm the payoff is is definitely there okay. um and and so i think it is in on face value it might not look like a progressive show mm. but i i do think actually when you when you get down to it, it, it there is a lot in there that you can enjoy um in terms of like you know progressive sort of themes and ideas and um and moving things forward and um and you know and and you get to know the characters a little bit more um and and the other thing that's quite good about the show is that with the male characters as well um you do you know some of them on face value might seem a bit two dimensional mm. but after a while you get to see mm -hmm. alternative sides of them that that you know like show a bit more to them yeah and and so you get this um so it does do a, a lot in terms of masculinity and mm. and and talking about um male themes and and so um i think there's a lot that you can get to grips with but it's is not the kind of show like we've said is that you're going to get in the first mm. few episodes i mean for me certainly mm. i'm i'm glad that i'm 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 there with it yeah. and um one of the you know i i think it is also quite good for for maybe people who aren't um so it, you know you were talking about a patronizing yeah. aspect um there's a particular episode i can't remember if it's season two or season three where they do a whole hitchcock thing <laughs> and um but for someone like you who's into filmmaking mm. you might find that episode really patronizing because <laughs> they're basically explaining how thriller works uh -huh. like as a genre and like how hitchcock what methods and techniques he sort of used mm. and um you know so and through that explanation they then execute those techniques and i think it's really clever uh -huh. but again i think if you think or well, if you're sat there thinking well i know all of this why are you telling me it it's maybe not for you um yeah. so i think um i don't mind i don't mind in terms of like if they're introducing something new and i know it. it's just a it's patronizing to the show itself. I just mm. feel like you've got the actors that are trying to do stuff, and then I don't know. I feel like it's yeah. patronizing to itself. Yeah, I, I get what you were. Uh, I, I, mean, I get what you mean. I think as you get through it, it gets quite self-aware, mm. and and um, as like I think most sort of modern shows do that a lot now. Yeah. Um, but I will, um, I will give it give it a go. However. I think the breaking point for me was this. We, there was like a shot near the end of the third episode, I think. And like, and we 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 do we do filmmaking, and you get to know what a tracking shot is and what a zoom shot is. And there's a shot where they just keep zooming in on somebody's face, and the filmmaker inside of me is saying, "Track, not zoom. Track, not zoom. Yeah, not zooming on their face." Okay, but maybe yeah. that's just that's 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 like I I need to give it a go again. But I think that was like the final straw for me. Mm. So I will give it a go again, but yeah. the, that's just like well, yeah, I think annoyance. um, yeah, I think I think it, me like I don't know you it be I'll be interested to see if mm. if you give it a go and you mm. still feel the same, yeah. and or if um you progress just go it, give up eight hundred words or something so like <laughs> <laughs> the addiction of eight hundred words yeah just need um, to finish that then. yeah um. Well, it, is is there anyone that you would recommend this show for, James? Um, so it it hinders on the lines of so when I was watching it, I got um I got I I kept on thinking of um Lemony Snicket um extraordinary events on Netflix. I thought of Pushing Daisies and I thought of Desperate Housewives, and I think if anyone loves them shows and your opinion is a stone throw away from me, this might be actually a really interesting show for you. So, like I say, underneath all my all the things which which I find annoying about the show, I think Jane is a fantastic actress, and I think the um, Raphael mm. um, character is also a fantastic actor. Yeah. And I think 
the show plants it's written really interestingly it's just the fact that i'm saying it pauses like i say they were in little details about episodes before mm. and i think that's really good and really interesting really well written it's just the way they, they lay it out with the narration yeah. i think so I, if you can get over the narration and you enjoy the little time to all the other shows and then i think you'll really enjoy it yeah so i think underneath i think it is a good show it's just the things they add on to it which i have an issue with yeah and so yeah so i think um and i'm a bit annoyed with myself because i can see there's a good show underneath it so i think i will try a couple more episodes yeah i'd say and give uh, it give it a few more episodes see see how you get on uh, i think yeah so we're saying that any any of the fans of those shows yeah, um i, I would there. i would say anyone who's a who's a fan of gilmore girls because of the the you know watching the relationships between mother daughter grandma mm. um that's you know there's a connection there for me as well yeah um i think uh if you're a fan of um it's kind of light-hearted comedies mm. uh if you're a fan of romance sort of cheesy romance mm. this show is is quite good for you um and i think there's uh you know um probably good for dinner you like watching something for when you're having dinner yeah um, yeah essentially yeah. yeah um i don't yeah i don't think it's i recommend it for anybody who kind of who you know who who wants something quite light-hearted um and again like i say it's got it's got some real sort of uh on on face value it doesn't it doesn't seem like a very deep show mm. but i think the more you get into it the deeper and, and the more it goes on the, the deeper the sort of um the relationships get and the more enriched it becomes so um i don't think I, i'm just sort of asking people not to sort of pre <laughs> prejudge it yeah. on on the first few episodes because i remember struggling with it mm -hmm. and now i'm a huge fan of the show and and i really look forward to yeah. to watching it so well, the um, fact it's got like so many seasons i think is also a testament to it must have yeah they must be doing like, something right yeah. yeah um uh and i do think like i say the um, a lot of the characters in the first season, um, some of which you think are going to be big characters without giving away too much, aren't. Mm -hmm. And then some of the characters that you think are periphery characters come into the fore a little bit more. Okay. So it, that's quite interesting in, in lots of ways. They do whole um, backups of characters as yeah. well, which I thought was quite kind of interesting. They say, oh, the wife of this person, and oh, like, there's this person. But you yeah. actually show that person. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's interesting now. Oh, you're not putting yeah. all your eggs out. Or you're not like throwing shit at everybody at the same time. You you kiss them behind, and that's obviously going to be revealed at some point. Yeah, I wish I could remember when the, the turning mm. point um, for me was, but. Um, yeah, I think I think throughout the four seasons so far, they they do do some interesting character developments, mm. and I I think it it the the show definitely finds a rhythm, and it definitely finds you know what it 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 sort of realizes what it's about and mm. what it's not, and um, I think once it irons these things out, it. And I think it. I think it must be towards the end of the first season. Yeah. Um. So you know, I'm. I'm sort of saying if even if you watch just two more episodes, that might not be enough. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, you you. I can understand how some people might not want to commit hmm. to more than six episodes before deciding whether they like something or not. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think um you know it's it's got a lot going for it and i just hope that um people you know even if just like one or two people listen to this and think yeah i'll give it a go and they end up loving it i mm -hmm. guess you know that's why we sort of do this this thing but i i can understand why a bit like um black panther i guess i can understand why people would critique it and mm -hmm. why um you maybe didn't enjoy it because I think you're going through some of the things that I went went through, yeah. perhaps. Um, but you, I think you maybe are able to, like, verbalise it more than, than I was, maybe. I don't know. But, 
Yeah, but give you've it. Also, experience the new stuff. You always experience so much you like about it. It's really hard to go back and critique. Yeah, you yeah, because you like see you, you, the things that will become great again. And yeah, things. yeah. So I can't imagine that yeah. be great now, but I know they're becoming really great characters later on. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think um, I think I think the themes for me are, are really they do become uh, core to the show, yeah. and and that, that's a good thing. And I honestly believe that the you know definitely the themes around sisterhood, motherhood. Um, and and the bond, bonds of family are you know done in so much such a better way than yeah. just as i feel like jessica jones tried it and they didn't get it right whereas i think this show mm. gets it right yeah. like gilmore girls yeah. um so that's, yeah. if we if there's ever another yeah. season yeah. of gilmore girls that's a bit of a yeah. Spoiler. I've, so. uh, I've not really seen um, that much of Gilmore Girls, but the yeah. parts I have seen, I've very, really enjoyed. Yeah, I think. Um, well, yeah. hey, I'm I'm almost certain there'll be an, a second season of the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is the same uh, writer producer. Ooh. Um, so as Gilmore Girls, so um, you know, maybe we'll get to review that at some point, cool. or maybe there's um a. You know, there might be a a dip month where with TV where I get to force you to watch yeah. Gilmore Girls. Have you seen it? Oh, I've seen part of it. Like I say, oh, I like yeah. I like it. I don't yeah. understand. There's a stereotypical hatred of it. Yeah, and I don't get that hatred of it. Um. Well, uh, I again, I suppose it's a bit like this. It. I mean, to me, that's just people going, "Oh, it's not got any action," or as you know, like, and that's just like, you know, that's just a f- snap judgment of something where people haven't given it a proper look i found it was really really witty it reminded me of like um um two pets of log and packet of crisps because that show that show is written really well because um every single line is either a joke or leads to a joke and i feel like every sort of line in gilmore girls is either something witty or leads to something witty yeah i feel like i feel like it's very tight mm. very yeah, yeah, um, yeah, it. yeah. But they, they, I think, if you if you watch enough of it, mm. there's also like drama in there, and yeah, and you know it, um, like it. it but anyway, this but, yeah, we're not this we're not, not reviewing, reviewing yeah. <laughs> Gilmore Girls, so yeah. maybe but, we'll get to do that in the future. But yeah. talking of the future, James, yes. what are we gonna what are we gonna look at well, next week? I've I've got I've used a soul stone. I've looked. I've used a used a time stone. I've looked into <laughs> the future. Yeah, and I know we're going to be talking about a show called Legion. Legion, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. I knew yes. you knew that, James. <laughs> yes. Through your future okay. powers. Uh, I, I, so... <laughs> I personally have seen the. We both seen the first season. Yes. There's episodes of the second season be released each week. Yep. I think we're on episode six. I can't. I, yeah, I can't remember. I have to um, find out. So I'm going to be catching up on what's been released in season two. Yeah, but you haven't started watching season two um, yet, have you? No. So how, what? What are your hopes and dreams for season two? I of thought Legion? the first one was amazing. I mean, Dan Stevens for me is an incredible actor, um, and he, yeah, he's he's an incredible actor. I think he's amazing, and I think he's developing. This, this character is developing really interestingly i know what the character turns into from the comic books like the most powerful mutant mm. there is spoiler um, <laughs> no it's okay James. Yeah, it's like, we, yeah. we have spoilers yeah. in yeah. the show yeah. it's okay so i feel like every yeah. time i mention that you feel really bad there's <laughs> like a part sorry, of you inside no. that's like i'm <laughs> sorry it's, but no I, we've, we, it's fine i hope to so, find okay. out more about more about I the think. um his background his um his his um i i suppose i suppose actually, sorry on reflection i don't no. i don't think that's much of a spoiler because in the no. first episode like in the very first episode of legion he's labeled as potentially the most powerful yeah um uh, mute well superhero or mutant mm. or whatever the world is about yeah um and you get the impression that this show is about the process yeah. of he, him but be- it's like yeah. it's a coming is it coming of age would you call it a coming of age show well he or doesn't like really know who com- he is yeah so he's he discovering to... himself so yeah. in a way yeah i, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. i know where you come with that yeah 
Okay, cool. It's, and so it wasn't too far fetched well, then. <laughs> there is something. There is something obviously directly linked with the main character within the first season, um, and in the second season there is some progression and it it changes. And so I'll be quite, it's going to be quite quite interesting to see the changes, um, the second season has, um, and it has a vil- the first season has a villain which I love from the comic books, and so it's really actually interesting to see it on screen. It's all different. We don't know when it's set because the film is sort of like it's sort of a mixture of the future, modern day, and the seventies. It's sort of just really weird. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to talking about that yeah. next week, like really going into yeah. that in detail. And like, um, if you watch back so in the first episode, you think this is yeah. just one episode. It does go through so much stuff. Yeah, so much yeah. stuff is packed in the first yeah. episode. It's um, first episode feels like a feature film. Yeah, it does. And, uh, it's quite clever in that sense, although. Anyway, we're getting into sort yeah. of deconstructing it. Yeah, but, so well, um, that's for next week. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, yeah. we'll try and hold back. Um, yeah. And I look forward to discussing yeah. um, Legion 1. And um, so if you've, not, if you've not seen it yet, check it out. It's yeah. on Now TV yeah. um, or Sky. And, Sky yeah. um, and it's a Fox show, I think, as yeah. well. So if you've got Fox UK, Fox you might be yeah. able to get a hold of it. Yeah. Um, so check it out. Uh, try and get up to date and then tune in next week and you can see if you agree with us and our opinions yeah. on Legion, which is yet another... Su- so we're, yeah. the superhero count is going up and up week by yeah. week. You know, like well, look, Legion's the... I, 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 think, I don't think it feels like... It feels like it's something different. Yeah. I think you'll yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll break, it to a, break it to it next yeah. week, but uh, um, it's definitely... Yeah, we'll definitely... Um, yeah, I'm. I'm trying to like talk over the top of you now <laughs> to like, stop you from like, because well, otherwise we're going to be here for another couple yeah. of hours, James. Well, we're going to go. Leaving. We're going to going to finish. So yes, we're going to enjoy the sun. Yeah, um, and relax. Um, and uh, yep. Yeah, and we'll see you next week. Um, yeah, yeah. Feel free to listen to our Avengers review. Um, feel free to um, join us on um, on the on the social net on the social networks, the Facebook, Twitter. Uh, and YouTube, uh, feel free to put a comment on there. We don't post that much stuff at the moment, but we will pick it up, we promise. Yeah, we keep saying that and every uh, week, but yeah. we're busy people. We're in yeah. demand. Look, we've got Marvel executives to yeah, deal right, with. Yeah. We've got, you know... DC oh. are starting to like, notice us as well. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've got to write the next Tomb Raider so we yeah. can write that wrong. You yeah. know, we've got, we're busy people yeah. over here. But, uh, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll love to hear from you. And, yeah, please... Um, Please stick with us, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, Goodbye yeah, well, from us. Goodbye from us. All right, bye.